Hi everyone, we're continuing polynomials and in this problem we're going to find all the zeros both real and imaginary for this function listed and what I did is I went ahead and put this this one in the calculator and I saw right away that uh, the one of the zeros is 2 so I already know one of the zeros is 2 because it crosses the x-axis there and I'm going to go ahead and use synthetic division and write this out to help me find the other zeros. All right, so I bring down the two, I multiply and add, uh, multiply and add. And then when I add, I get 68. I multiply and add, get 136. And then when I add, multiply, I get negative 182. And I get 0. Since 0 is my remainder, that means 2 is a 0, which we already knew that because we put in the calculator. So I'm going to go down 1 for the degree. My degree is 4. So now I'm going to go down 1. So this is 2x cubed minus 19x squared plus 68x minus uh, 91. So that's going down one. When I uh, put this in the calculator, I also notice that um, it crosses the graph at 3 and a half, which is 7 halves. So to save time here, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, um, or save space, erase this, and do the same thing. And I'm going to put 7 halves here. Okay, and just take what I have here. Bring down the 2, multiply, and add. So you multiply this, the 2's will go away, and you get 7. Subtract, you get, or add, you get negative 12. And then 2 into negative 12 is negative 6. And times 7 is negative 42. And you add, you get 26. And then 2 goes into 26, 13 times 7 is negative 42. And you get 26. And then you multiply again. And you get um, 13 goes 61. Just a minute. Sorry, this is plus, And this would be um, 91. I messed up here. Okay. So we get uh, 91 here, and we have our other zero. Okay, so these are our two zeros. Basically, that means when we write this in uh, intercept form, we have x minus 2, and this would be 2x minus 7. Now, we still have this to deal with, and so we're going to go to the other page and uh, rewrite this. So we have, again, we have y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 26. Since we're trying to find the zeros, that means when when y is 0, what's x? I'm going to factor out the 2, and I get x squared minus 6x uh, plus 13. All right. I notice right away I can't factor this. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula, and I'll stick it over here. That's just x equals plus or minus square um, equals b squared minus 4ac. b squared plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So basically, sorry about that, and there's your quadratic formula. You should already know that, and so I'm going to plug everything in. My a equals 1, my b equals negative 6, and my c is 13. This is negative b. All right, so I plug it in, I'm going to get 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 4ac. 
C all over 2 times 1, which is 2. And we're going to get X. This is X equals. X equals 6 plus or minus square root of negative 16 over 2, which is equal to um, 6 plus or minus 4i over 2. And we can reduce this as 3 plus or minus 2i. So my other two intercepts are 3 plus 2i comma 0 and 3 minus 2i comma 0 if we write it in intercept form. Okay. The next problem is just listing the possible zeros here. We're listing the possible rational zeros. Um, we don't want imaginary here. I'm going to let this number be my p and this is my q. And our possible zeros are p over q. And you do the factors of these. So the factors of p are plus and minus, and you just do all the factors of 42. Hope I can get them all. Let's get 1 divides 42, 2, 3, 6, and 7, of course, 14, 21, and 42. All right, my q is all the factors of 6, which would be 1, 2, 3, and 6. And this is all plus and minus. All right, so the possible factors are P over Q. So that's going to be plus or minus. And basically, you're going to write all of these down because we're dividing this by 1. So just copy those down. 1, 2, 3. 6, 7, 14, 21, and 42. Now, we take this same row and divide everything by 2, but with no repeats. So when we, um, the only thing we're going to get here, 2 divided by 1 is 2, but we already have 2. So we're going to get 2 over 3, which is 2 thirds. 2 over, um, 2 over 6, which is 1 half. Or one third, sorry. Now we have to do the same thing with the three and so on. So um, when you divide everything by three, you get the same thing. And then you, you go with six and you keep going on and on and on. And what I got was um, we get one half, um, one third, one sixth, two-thirds, which I already wrote here, three-halves, seven-halves, seven-thirds, seven-sixths, uh, fourteen-thirds, uh, and twenty-one-halves. And I think I got them all. Okay. So that's just listing the possible rational zeros of the polynomial. Okay, the next one, find the degree of the polynomial, which is right here. The degree is 5. And the lead coefficient, which is negative 2, and describe the end behavior. So what I'm going to do is look at this. I know for my power functions that y equals x to the fifth looks like this. It's real th um, thick in here and then it shoots up really tall here. But since we have negative, um, it's the opposite way. So it reflects over the y so that it's going to be like this. Comes down here, goes down like that. So this is the one we want to look at. This is our power function. And knowing that Anytime you graph this function, you're going to start in quadrant 2 and end in quadrant 4. And to describe the end behavior, what we want to know is what is y doing as x? So we're looking at these tail ends here. So when x goes
goes to negative infinity, what's happening to y? Well, y is shooting up to infinity. So what you write is y uh, approaches infinity um, as x goes to negative infinity. And now we have to look at the end behavior on this side. And we're looking this way. So as um, y is approaching negative infinity when x approaches infinity. So when x is going to infinity, y is going to negative infinity. And it's basically just telling you where, what quadrant to start in. All right, the next one we have is list the possible rational zeros like we did before, and then use synthetic division to find the actual zeros. So I'm going to list them quickly like I did before. I'm going to do my P, which is all the factors, plus and minus factors of 20, which would be 1, comma 2, comma 4, comma 5, comma 10, comma 20. I list all the factors of Q. Remember, this is my P. This is my, so this is P. And my Q is my 3. And that's just going to be uh, plus or minus 1, comma, and 3. <clears throat> now, to, the possible rational ones are P over Q. So I just divide this out. I'm going to copy this down. That's divided by 1. So everything divided by 1 is itself. There's not a 3. So 4, 5, 10, and 20. And then I have to divide all this by 3. So we get 1 third, um, 2 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds. I put 5 here. That's thirds. Everything's going to be over 3. 10 thirds and 20 thirds. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this in my calculator and I notice that it crosses at negative 4. So I'm going to use synthetic division here and um, uh, get this uh, factored out. And I bring down my 3, multiply these two, you get a negative 12, add, multiply, you get 64, add these two, and you get 5, multiply negative 20, 0. So now we start it with uh, x cubed, so we're going down 1. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, put the x squared here, x here and plus 5 here. So there's your equation. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to 0 here. So there's what I have to factor. And I can, um, instead of using synthetic division, I can go ahead and factor this as 3x minus 1 times x minus 5 equals 0. So, um, here, uh, when I set 3x minus 1 equals 0, I get x equals 1 third. And this one's easier. 5 minus 5 is 0, so x is 5. So my three zeros would be negative um, 4, which we had here, comma 0, 1 third, comma 0, and 5, comma 0. So that, there's your answers right there. Okay, the next one is to rewrite in, uh, the polynomial function in intercept form and find a zero. So I notice here that I can factor by grouping. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out an x squared for these first two and get a 2x minus 1. I'm going to factor out a 9 here and get 2x minus 1. Okay, and then I can put these two together. So you get x squared minus 9 times 2x minus 1. 
So that gives you x minus 3 times x plus 3 times 2x minus 1. And we have to find the x-intercepts, so that's when y is 0. And so we'll get, when y is 0, we have 3 comma 0, negative 3 comma 0. And for this one, that's just going to be, uh, you set this to 0, add the 1, divide by 2, so it's to be 1 half comma 0. That's your x-intercepts. Your y-intercept is just going to be 9. All you do is plug in 0 for the x's. And what I tend to do is I just cross these out because that, that will zero out and you get 9. So when x is 0, y is 9. That's all. Thanks and have a nice day. Bye-bye.